Hey everybody, I'm pushing this episode out really quick. This episode of the Fire Spanker Podcast was recorded in Austin, Texas at the NFSA uh, Expo and Convention. It was my conversation with Reliable, Phil Friday from Reliable. Reliable has a sprinkler that is listed for lithium ion batteries. I was trying to wait until I was able to get a, a, a video of the sprinkler in operation, but I'll release that as soon as I get it. I didn't want to wait to hear the episode. Like and subscribe. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Fire Sprinkler Podcast. I am on location in Austin, Texas at the NFSA Conference and Expo here with Phil Friday. Phil, how's it going today? Good. Excellent. You guys have a new product that is out. Is out now? It's out. Is available it's now? It's out. It's available. Before we get into that, tell me a little bit about who you are and tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. So um, I'm one of the newcomers to Reliable. I've, I've been here about a year and a half. Um, I am a fire protection engineer. I was in the consulting world for okay. 20 years. Um, University of Maryland grad. Did a lot of work in commercial industrial, uh, the commercial industrial segment. Um, and so I've known Steve Wolin, who's now my boss, for, for a really long time. We actually went to school together. And, um, so I came on board about a year and a half ago, and this is one of the first projects we're going to talk about that I, that I got to tackle. So, so was good. this something that's been in development for a year and a half that you guys have been working on? It's, it's been about a year. So yeah. I came on board in December of uh, 2021, um, and and probably the spring of 2022, we started looking at this as a um, a space and an opportunity that that needed to be explored. Okay, let's get right into it. What do you guys have now available from the library? With this particular thing, this is, so this is the new LB11 sprinkler. Uh, the LB stands for lithium battery. Okay. And and this was designed specifically uh, to address um, uh, lithium batteries in manufacturing facilities. So lithium battery manufacturing facilities. That's one of those things that hasn't been addressed really by anybody as of yet because of the level and in the height of the hazard that's that's there with a lithium battery manufacturing right. the density the volume all of that stuff is just insane you showed me a video before we started recording so that i could have an idea and kind of wrap my head around generally what you guys were working on and it's ins it's insane yeah it's neat it's uh it, it was a it was a really interesting project it's something that's ongoing right we we of course don't want just want to stop at the listing that we have and Right. Um, there's more testing that's planned, um, but I'll, you know, if you want, I'll tell you a little bit about specifically what parts of manufacturing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that, that this would address. So, um, if, you, if you find your way in a lithium-ion battery manufacturing facility, first thing you notice is they're massive. Right? You know, they're, they're large, expensive projects. Um, there's really kind of two pieces to it. There's this assembly or creation of the cells. Yeah. Some people call that electrode cell assembly. And then there is a second piece of it, some people refer to as formation or aging, where they essentially condition the cells and bring them to life. So when a lithium battery cell is, or lithium ion battery cell is first uh, made, so you know it's gone through the, uh, the cell manufacturing process, uh, it doesn't have any energy. There's no stored energy there. Um, and, and so they condition those cells, they charge and discharge them, they put them in higher temperature rooms, leave them for several days, maybe more than several days, leave them in, in rooms for, for, that are at normal temperature for a few days. So that's a lot going on around us, isn't there? There's a lot of stuff going on right now. They are still setting up the expo hall. We did sneak in under the radar to record this. <laughs> You're getting the full experience of the pre conference Let's do it before they open up. It'll be <laughs> yeah, quiet. That's right. That's right. Um, so, uh, when you get into that second piece, the formation and aging, uh, you, you, there's these really tall racks that have the lithium battery cells stored in typically polymeric trays. And those trays move around the formation process, but they're, you know, it looks like rack storage. It looks, a lot of it is single row rack configuration because they have rail cranes, it's automated. Yep. They have robots that go and they pick the trays. Um, and that is where the sprinkler is designed to both address that and, and improve in efficiency over what's being done now. So would this be the first, because I, let me see that thing again. Sure. Because what you did, what, the video you did show me um, was 
the storage, the automatic storage retrieval system. <clears throat> Main going across the front, line going across the front, but large line. These are designed to discharge how much water and at what PSI. Because sure. yep. from what I know about lithium ion batteries, and I've done a couple you know, webinars, I've had uh, Victoria from NFBA on, I've talked a little bit about lithium ion batteries, Jacqueline as well. Um, a lot of water, they burn hot. They do. But you guys have now, based off the video that I've seen, the video that you showed me, you guys got extinguishment of thermal runaway. We did. We we. You'll hear people. I've heard people say this before that you cannot stop thermal runaway. And and while that's true at the cell level, um, this is my understanding of it. If you if your cell goes into thermal runaway, you can, it's going to do. It's going to go through through that process, and you you know you kind of left the to watch that happen. <laughs> thermal runaway propagation is when you have cell to cell thermal runaway. Okay. And and there's really not been a lot of success, no, none that I know of in stopping thermal runaway propagation, so cell to cell. So in our test, we did it with about, there were about 8,000, 18,650 cells, um, and only 30% of those cells were damaged. So we, so we ended up having essentially extinguishment. So now what size battery would that be? What type of device? What type of unit? Yeah. That's probably not going to be a Tesla. Yes, it is. Actually, That's a Tesla. So, so those batteries are the exact battery that is in a Tesla Model S. Okay. And so that is the battery. And yeah, a lot of people are surprised by that. Uh, now Tesla uses some of the larger format batteries for their Model X, Model Y, yep. cars. I think for the new Cybertruck and some of the newer things are going to use their big, they have a 4680 cell they're trying to perfect. Yeah, it's like yeah. a thing size of a Red Bull can. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so battery electric vehicles, battery energy storage systems, uh, you know, these originally were found in things like laptops, right? power tools. Yep. DeWalt's next to us, so this is why. That's I what we're here. pointing to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so battery packs <laughs> and power tools, they've yep. got a bunch of them over there. Yep. Um, so uh, just a lot of things. I mean, I have flashlights at home that have 18650s in them. Yep. Uh, electric skateboards, one wheels, e-scooters, e-bikes. Yep. Everything uh, has, or not everything, a lot of things have that type of cell. But. Sure. So the design of this sprinkler, this is this is a K112. It is. I was expecting a larger orifice to come out of this sprinkler. You guys yeah. have managed to to contain and get extinguishment. What did you call it? Uh, the kill off. The uh, yeah, yeah. So, so um, one of the things when you're testing it at UL, one of the things they'll look at is is it cold out or not. Cold in other out. words, yeah. did, did their firefighters have to come in and finish it off? Sure. Very common in a you know if you're doing storage mm -hmm. testing. Uh, do, testing ESFR sprinklers where the guys will come in and, you know, they'll finish it off. It's, um, and, and, and so when, the, when they don't have to do that, they call it cold out. And so that's what we ended up getting. With so you guys were able to get extinguished. So you had, you had mentioned a little bit earlier, so I'm not going to take credit, but, but this is essentially, it's not an ESFR, but you're dumping yeah. ESFR levels of water. It's about half the level of ESFR water, right? So 60 gallons a minute out of an 11.2, I didn't answer your question. Well, maybe I did. So 60 <laughs> gallons a minute, 28 PSI ish. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's a fairly common uh, discharge rate of, or pressure for an 11.2 in a rack for a higher hazard system. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, your ESFR sprinklers tend to discharge 120. Yeah, a little bit 50, more. 50, yeah. 60, you know, a little bit more. Um, four heads. We have to calculate four heads for the current listing and lay out so two on two lines um, that's really good as well so the listing of these i'm assuming uh, we did talk about this but no fm approval as of yet ulc listed for maybe not the specific application because have they even yeah. developed a standard for this well yet? yeah that's another interesting question or have so, you guys developed their standard for yeah them? it'll so it'll be ul listed ul um we worked closely with them through this whole process because there's nothing for this right now. There's not a sidewall sprinkler that's listed for storage. So we had to start there. So there's yeah. now a new standard, yep. UL199K. Um, you should be able to go find that, that was developed in concert with this project. Um, wow. 
So it's interesting. It, it's very interesting. Now, would your would your design area because is it single or double row rack that you do? Do you have one in the middle? One like is it back the, and forth like this? Right now, there's only for the single row, which is mostly what you see in formation and aging. Okay. In in uh, battery manufacturing, the next step is to go look at the double deep configuration. Uh, it's sort of an obvious next step. Yeah. And I think maybe down the road, what we'd like to do is you know expand this to a true in rack for protection of any kind of uh, horizontal sidewall in yep. rack for any kind of storage. Of course, if you happen to have single row racks that look like these particular ones and the barriers and whatnot, um, you could use this for standard commodities because we tested it against exposed expanded plastics as well. Because there was a development for you, you didn't immediately jump into the deep end with full speed going for the lithium ion batteries. You started with the plastic material that the batteries are made out of. Yep. And then kind of went to the next progression from there. That's right. That's uh, I think that's a good way to describe it. We, I mean, as much as we wanted to just dive right in with batteries. Um, <laughs> I, I think they, a lot of people want to do that, yeah. but do they actually want to do that? Right, right. <laughs> well, that's the exciting part. You, yeah. Um, there's, that would there would have been a long road to figure out what's the right thing to test. Right. And so I think, you know, I think by, you know, if we could fast forward to 10 years from now and we looked back, we would go, well, you know, now there is a standard for lithium ion batteries, but it's such a new technology, um, at least in the, you know, being mass produced in North America that we're not there yet. So FM approval, you asked about that. I did ask about FM um, approval. Not currently in the works. And okay. so we will, you know, we will see, we haven't had a conversation with them about, you know, whether what they're interested in. Uh, working on a project like this, but um, yeah, that's that we don't have that right now. One question that kind of popped into my head: <clears throat> the storage commodity that you guys are are protecting is that? Did you guys go into lithium ion manufacturing and storage facilities and say this is how it's stored, or do you guys have? Do you guys change the way that they have to store their batteries? Uh, that's a that is a really good question too, Chris. So we went into facilities and said this is how it's stored. Let's let's figure out a um, a solution that's both been tested and better than what's being done right now. So, yeah, we looked at what they had and developed the, this based on that. Awesome, which is a good way of doing things. Don't yeah. let people set a certain way and then tell them they got to change it this early into a technology. We are really bad <laughs> at it as an industry and doing that as as and going. Hey, you know, this is what you need to do, and it's. Think about that for a second. It's we are the ones telling end users how to do their what they need to do, and it's like maybe we would be better if we, you know, started to figure out how to protect what it is they have. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's a really good way of putting it. What we'll do is we'll link that video that you showed me right here, if sure. possible. Everybody yes, get the absolutely. approval to go ahead, and then uh, we, we yeah. can use that. I can overlay it. I can do a whole bunch of other stuff. Phil, thanks for coming on. This Enjoyed is it. a big thing for the industry, especially yeah. with the development of lithium ion batteries and the manufacturing. It's it's not a small scale problem. It's a big scale problem. Yeah. That's that's only really we're just starting to see. 30% growth is what they're talking about in battery manufacturing over the next seven or eight years, maybe to 2035. So wow, um, that's a lot. Right, that's a thirty percent annual. Is it? That, that's a lot, and we're excited about it. So, yeah, I enjoy talking to you about it. Hey, I enjoy talking yep. about it, and learning about it too. Thank you very much. Good. Hey, everybody. The laying it down for Camp Buckle fundraiser is still going on. The donations have slowed down, but the hoses have not. This sea can is starting to get filled up. These are the ones I just unloaded from the trailer. Those are the ones that were sitting here since last year. These are all still sitting here from last year. We're looking to get donations rolling in. In addition to those hoses that I just showed you, I still have a picture that I'm going to insert right here of all the fire hoses that are still up in Pickering, Ontario. Thank you to the Toronto Social Housing for donating 95% of these fire hoses, as well as everybody else from Southwestern Ontario and Ontario for donating hoses. But let's get those donations to roll in. The link is posted below. 20 bucks a hose. Let's get some money in and let's support Camp Bucko. Thanks, guys.